Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Royal Sussex Live. Welcome one and all. Okay, let me get my slides up and we are good to go. Wait, are they ready? Yeah, the slides are ready. Okay. Uh, hmm. All righty then. And then I'll say hello and, um, okay. Ooh, today is April 2nd. All right. And let me see who's here first. Mackenzie, thank you so much for being here. Now, uh, Norma Campbell, uh, Mama Jane, Sonia Johnson, Lynn E., Judy Mutasset, um, and Fancy Fancy, Karen Warner. Uh, who else is here? Uh, truth is Truth. Love Wins Movement. Thank you so much for my surprise. I tell you, that was very, very touching. Very, very touching. I, I was, I, I tell you, I, I was very emotional. Thank you so much for that. Uh, let's see, Lids. Okay. Jo anyway, Joyce Anderson. Let me uh, just go ahead and, uh, oh, Lydia Washington, no BD. Did I say hi? Okay, do a squick, a uh, squick, quick stroll through. Scroll, not stroll, not a quick stroll. <laughs> I've never had a. Wait, let me cross my fingers. I've never had a quick stroll in my life. Um, uh, let me see here. Mary H. Okay. Uh, now, let's get on with it then, shall we? Oh, let me move a screen over here so I can see everything that you're seeing. That's always helpful. Ah, wunderbar. Wonderful. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> oh, there it is right there. And you all can hear me. So everything is set. Hey, Jay Parks. All right. So you guys, oh, this is, this is very, very sad news. Okay. So uh, Chef Jose Andreas, uh, Change the profile picture to what you see here, which is just that lone figure cutting up vegetables or whatever. And, of course, you can see that stormy, cloudy sky. Um, and all of this is in reference to a horrendous loss today for the um, World Central Kitchen. I mean, I just, you know, sometimes I have this thing where when I – see something or feel something, it's not real until I hear myself say it. And so, but, but it must be said, uh, Jay Parks, thank you for the super sticker. Um, we are citizens of the world. What's good for you must be good for all. If you are lost, share a plate of food with a stranger, you will find who you are. Those are beautiful words. And, um, of course, again, that is from World Central Kitchen, Chef uh, Jose Andreas. Uh, if you take a look here, seven World Central Kitchen team members killed in Gaza. Seven of them killed in Gaza. Um, there was an airstrike. And from uh, reports, they actually made sure that they coordinated their movements with the, uh, what do they call it, the IDF or the IVF, the Israeli forces. They made sure that they coordinated their movements. But in spite of that, um, and it has been confirmed, I believe, by the, the Israelis that they bombed the car. They, they killed all seven of these aid workers one of which was a Palestinian driver. Um, very, very, very sad. Uh, right here, 
uh, world outrage after Israel kills international charity staff in Gaza. Details are still emerging about the attack that has shaken humanitarian groups around the world. These are aid workers. These are aid workers. These are people that left the comfort of their lives in some cases to go out into the field and to do uh, the Lord's work, to do God's work, to be out there amongst people that are suffering for, from hunger, from thirst. I mean, two of the most essential daily needs that you could ever know in life, followed by everything else that was happening over there. And it's been a very, very difficult thing um, for people who uh, have never seen s such um, chaos, such such uh, terror in your life. And, you know, as, as much as people have criticized uh, Elon Musk, and, and rightly so, rightly so, um, <clears throat> it's because of the freedom that has been given to one and all on the um, platform formerly known as Twitter, that people are able to share these things. And it's been tough. It has been very, very difficult. Um, you log on and you can see all manner of horror. And I've, um, I've seen things that only censors at a platform like um, like this one or or any of these uh, platforms I um, I saw a documentary once uh, and they say that the people that are the human contacts that evaluate what is and is not proper content they say that you see things that you cannot unsee and collectively, I think there's a lot of us who have seen those things and it changes you. It really does change you. And I don't begrudge anyone who looks the other way because it is, it's awful. It is absolutely awful. And that the world uh, in some cases, well, so many people in the world seem to be disinterested. They don't care. And the worst of the worst of those who have applauded um, this, this genocide, this massacre, there are people that have actually applauded them. And, um, and as they say, there is a place in hell for those people. It's going to make for an interesting election season, I can assure you that. Um, Of course, they uh, they suspended operations. World Central Kitchen has had to suspend operations. They didn't have a choice. They did not have a choice. They have been targeted. They had, they have been targeted, and they, as you can see from 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 this right here, uh, they knew who they were targeting, and it did not matter. It did not matter. So. You guys, as I always say, the prayer warriors, make sure you keep praying. That we desperately need. We desperately need um, for the innocent uh, or innocence, rather, that has been lost. Uh, yeah, uh, that's the right word. It is barbaric. It is barbaric. So I I actually, I'm I'm. I'm actually pleased that it is streaming around the world because it's one thing to pretend as though it's not happening because you don't have the access to the information, but the information is out there. And of course, there is a counter narrative that has been working feverishly uh, to try to convince us that the sky is not blue, but we know what we're seeing. We know what we're seeing. And and I, I pray that, that those responsible will answer for this 
and and all the other crimes against humanity. 170 United Nations relief workers have been killed during Israel's assault in Gaza since October, the largest single loss of life in the history of the United Nations, despite the continued killing of civilians and humanitarian staff in Gaza, the United States approved more arms sales to Israel this week, which is extraordinary. Actually, I shouldn't even say that is routine, isn't it? Every word has consequences. Every silence, too. Jean-Paul Sartre. So, um, that um, that is that is what's happening. That is what's happening, and it's very, very, very sad. And um, yeah, I, I I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna wait and see what um, the Sussex Squad community um, what they're gonna do in response to this in terms of uh, making donations. Um, likely it will be to World Central Kitchen, but let's see if um, if they put together any type of fundraiser. And then, but in the meantime, if you so choose to to donate, you can always do that to World Central Kitchen at any time, as we have supported them um, in the past. So uh, I thank you for listening to that. Um, I know it's not easy for some of us, but um, that it, it happened. It happened. And uh, I feel like we're part of the World Central Kitchen family. I really feel like we're part of their family. Uh, David became a new uh, member. Thank you so much for that, David. And thank you for being here tonight. Okay, let me see. Yeah, Ulibi, I'm disappointed in the entire government. I, I I wish that we could single out any one person, but the truth is this has been going on too long. And I feel like the entire U.S. government is bought and paid for. We have the best government money can buy. You walk in a pauper and you walk out a billionaire. You walk in there poor and you fly back to your home state in a private jet that you probably own. And, um, you know, we we say so much about the royal family, but looks like we got some blue bloods right there in Washington, D.C. And, and worst of all, it's all legal. It's all legal. It's been too long. It's been too long. Okay, um, so uh, Save the Children has said uh, in response to today's uh, or yesterday's event, humanitarian aid workers are not a target. Humanitarian aid workers are not a target. So um, I don't think anyone should be a target. I really don't think anyone should be a target. And years ago, when I would tell people about what was happening over there, people would look at me like I was a talking dog or like I had a, a two heads or something, like they couldn't understand what was being said. And now the world knows, and my question is, what are we going to do about it? As humanity goes, what are we going to do about it? That's the big question. Because we, we cannot, as a species, keep looking the other way. Which is what I said about Iraq, and which is what I said about Afghanistan. Uh, there was no need for us to be there. And as usual, people look the other way. People look the other way. So... Um, these are the aid workers that were lost. Uh, the World Central Kitchen family mourns the loss of these heroes. And they are heroes. They are heroes. 
multinational heroes, including, of course, um, the lone Palestinian driver. Oh, my God, only 25 years old. Australia, Poland, U.S. and Canada, U.K., U.K., and the U.K., Uh, yeah, Wanda, the military-industrial complex, right? The military-industrial complex. It was true back in the 1950s, and it's true today. Okay. Um, but we do have this to talk about, um, and I, I appreciate you taking the time to listen to that. Um, today, we were uh, given a treat from the Los Angeles Children's Hospital. Uh, apparently, uh, the Duchess of Sussex is not the only famous person that has gone through those doors and sat down with a book and actually talked to the, oh, well, read to the children. She read several books. And I, um, I have some photos here, but before I do that, I'm gonna play a short video which some of you all may have seen it earlier. I did it, uh, yeah, I put it together some hours ago, but I'm going to play it right now, and uh, hopefully this will give us a chance to decompress from everything that uh, you may be feeling right now. So let me get cue that up, and then we will talk about it. The Duchess of Sussex visited the Children's Hospital Los Angeles on March 21st, where she led a literally healing session. Children were laughing and singing as the Duchess turned into character with every page as she read patient favorite books like Rosie the Riveter, Pete the Cat, and I saw a cat, according to a statement. Megan also helped children with STEAM activities connected to each book. In a video of the visit, Megan greeted the children as they gathered for the engaging reading time, excitedly showing the cover of Rosie Revere, engineer, and telling the group, this is one of my favorites. The mom of two, she shares a four-year-old son, Prince Archie, and a two-year-old daughter, Princess Lilibet, with Prince Harry, gave animated readings, adding voice inflections and gestures to go along with the stories. Children shouted out answers and sang along as Megan read Pete the Cat and his four groovy buttons. This was a great choice, friends, she said as she closed the book and declared, the end. Megan also posed with photos with children, talking to a young girl about how neat an instant camera image was. This isn't the first time Megan's storytelling skills were on display. To mark Archie's first birthday in May 2020, the Duchess of Sussex and her son appeared in a video where she read the book Duck, Rabbit by Amy Krauss Rosenthal and Tom Lichtenheld. Archie's relationship with Dad Prince Harry also inspired Megan to author a children's book, The Bench. The Bench started as a poem I wrote for my husband on Father's Day the month after Archie was born, Megan said in the press release from publisher Random House Children's Books. That poem became this story. Megan dedicated the book to Harry and Archie. For the man and the boy who make my heart go pump pump, the dedication says. As a guest on Brightly Storytime, the Duchess of Sussex read the bench in a YouTube video in 2021, and she also shared her story with children at PS 123 Mahalia Jackson School in Harlem during a visit in September of the same year. I wrote this when we just had our little boy, and I haven't read it to any other kids but you, she told the group who sat together with Prince Harry to hear the reading. Children's Hospital Los Angeles's Literally Healing is a reading program that gifts families at the hospital 
more than 65,000 books annually and provides a unique opportunity to promote literacy. The story time was part of Make March Matter, an annual fundraiser at the hospital that unites celebrities, business, and the greater community in support of its mission of creating hope and building healthier futures. Since 2016, the campaign has raised more than $10 million for the Children's Hospital Los Angeles. Oh, David, thank you so much for that. You have upgraded to the silver. Yes, David has actually upgraded to the silver membership. Thank you very much. The memberships do start at just $4.99. Uh, but David has decided to go with the silver, and I greatly appreciate that. Thank you so much. Hello, Big Mama. Uh, Black Queen is here. Hey, Black Queen. Black Queen, who is like the only one that has her own uh, thing. So there you go. <laughs> All right. Uh, hi, Joan Garcia, Blue Draws, uh, Andrea Allen. So were you guys pleasantly pleased today by uh, seeing this uh, collection of photos just appear out of nowhere? I know I was. I wasn't expecting anything for a while. I Well, I'm not going to tell you what I thought that uh, Megan was working on because, um, you know, just in case, I'm just not going to say. Not that I have any, like, uh, privileged information or anything. I'm not saying I do. I just have some very good hunches, and I just thought she was working on something else. But um, it appears as though, well, actually, what? date that this happened were they holding no they couldn't have i mean because there's other people that have uh, uploaded photos but i thought the date was um days ago am i wrong about that oh uh, maybe not i don't know i don't know I, I i all of a sudden i forgot but uh anyway uh, take a look here there's our duchess reading she's wearing flats you guys she's wearing flats uh which is cool don't always have to uh, get out those um, those stilettos uh, for every occasion. I think it looks perfectly elegant. Um, our Duchess seems like she could be a school teacher um, uh, today. And they, of course, I wasn't crazy about the People Magazine headline um, shows off her acting skills. Um well, I mean, yes, I know why they said that, because she was kind of doing some characters and everything, but eh, I don't know. I'm just, because of of how things have been the past few years, I'm always looking for a trigger. I'm always looking for something that's going to be a little uh, slight or something like that, and I'm sure it was all innocent, but she did give some characters. Uh, let's see. Happy birthday wishes to Juliet. Holder Fowler, can we dance out uh, to celebrate? Absolutely. Absolutely. I need to kick up my heels right now. Let me see. And all right. Um, we'll have Ivy do the, do the uh, honors as per usual. Let me see. Is that the, oh, this one right here. Here we go. Hello, Ivy here. Hello, Ivy here. Hello, Ivy. Today is little bit Diana Mountbatten Windsor's birthday. Meet me at the Royal Sussex party. Church Nellie's gonna be there. All right, Ivy out. <laughs> Yeah.
You know what? I have not come down from my high yet. As you know, I... All right. Happy birthday uh, to Juliet and many happy returns of the day. And thank you for watching Royal Sussex. Very cool. Very cool. Thank you so much. Oh, look at there. How cute. How cute. Uh, by the way, I do have some information on the outfit. We'll be bringing that to you very soon. Uh, notice all the signage back there. I think it's about washing your hands, right? I see a big stop. Well, if not, it should be. I am, well, I'm not so fanatical about hand washing, but one thing's for sure, anytime I come in from outside, I always wash my hands and I am still, I promise you, I am still wearing a face mask. Okay. Oh yeah, some of those thumbnails for the derangers. Um, I I look. I'm just like, are you all serious? Are you all serious? And as far as I can tell, they are. As far as I can tell, they are. It's insane some of the stuff that they say, but um, oh man, and yeah, I I tell you. Just be very careful if you do happen to make a mistake and click on one of those awful channels, go directly to the history and remove it. You don't have to remove everything. Just remove that channel. And, of course, do those three dots and say not interested and then remove it so that it, eventually they'll stop coming up. I promise. I rarely ever get those popping up on my feed. Uh, uh, thank you so much. Uh, was it Profara? Thank you so much for being here. And take a look there. Um, I don't know if you all had a chance to see it, but Megan was actually taking photos. They had Polaroids, and um, they would actually take the photos, and then she would uh, sign them and uh, gift them to the kids. So that's very cool. That would give them something to share with their families. This is going to be quite a story for them to share with their families. The day they met a princess, a real African-American princess. How cool is that? How cool is that? Ah, take a look there. Um, are those, is that Tony the Tiger she's wearing? Anyway, it looks like a tiger. So cool. Oh, and I think I see the Polaroid. Uh, let me see. Is that a Polaroid she's holding there? I think I see the Polaroid uh, Megan's holding. So nice. So nice. This really made my day. This really made my day. Oh, yeah. I don't think this one was actually in the magazine. Um, but there's been a few, you know what? And there's going to be some more photos that pop up between now and tomorrow. So. Connie Balmer! Hey, Connie Balmer! <laughs> Connie Balmer's up early, early, early today. Uh, thanks for being here, Connie Balmer. Uh, let me see. Nasdaq is here. And Mackenzie says, some of the channels will pretend to be kind for like five minutes in order to know for sure you go right to comments if filled with hate, is not Sussex friendly. Yeah, it's not Sussex friendly. You guys, I, I, I don't want to lecture, but I got to say this again. I'm just surprised that some of you all actually watch those channels and then even uh, believe some of the stuff that they say. If it's something really sensational, um. It will it will be in other places. And some of the things, if it's like not trending on all over the media, then it's probably not true. I mean, there's people who uh, know about things that aren't really that important because they see it on the six o'clock news. So, yeah, I mean, 
if it's that salacious, trust me, you'll find out whether or not it's true. I would say that if it's really too shocking, then it's probably not true. So don't be fooled by those thumbnails because the thing is, if there is something terrible that's that's uh, going to happen, you're not going to stop it because you give attention to these horrible channels. You know, just be cool and find a Sussex friendly space. And and um, if it's really something that you need to know there, it will be there. It will be there. I promise you. Uh, but thank you, Mackenzie. Okay. And, ah, the nurses. Yes, there was a group shot with the nurses. I don't think this one made the cut um, with the um, any of the magazine articles, but someone found it. And they're on the Panda Express floor. Now, see, I'm kind of greedy. If I got on the elevator and I saw a button that said Panda Express and I got to that floor and there was I couldn't smell like, you know, Korean barbecue or something like that, I would be very, very disappointed. If I couldn't smell like, you know, rice and all kind of good stuff, steaming, I would be really disappointed if I got up to the panda floor and there was no uh, cafeteria style line for me to make my way to. So... <laughs> I think that's very cruel if there's no food up there. But I tell you what, if they put it at the top of a flight of stairs, they'd never see me up there. I don't do steps. I do not do steps. <laughs> I don't know how I used to live on the third floor walk up. And, you know, it was really uh, more than just going to the third floor because you know, those old vintage buildings, you had to go up some steps before you even got to the uh, first floor. So I don't know how I did that. And I did that for a couple of years. Oh, my thighs are aching just thinking about it. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Uh, thank you very much. I will do that. Thank you, John Garcia. I love surprises. Uh, let me see. Rohini says, I do hope that the uh, deranger conspiracy about Megan being, oh, I'm not even going to repeat that one. <laughs> I'm not even going to repeat that. I heard that the first time the other day, and I'm just like, uh, when they're ready for us to know something like that, if it were true, then, oh, my God, those things, those things. Uh, let's see. P says, Baron, I enjoy your commentary because you're knowledgeable and your analysis is a great example if you, uh, uh, if uh, how to apply media literacy is so important that we are able to scrutinize what we consume. P, absolutely. Absolutely. And that's why I love Constance. Um, uh, what's her name? Um, because, you know, it is something that really should be taught in school. If they would teach it in school, we would have a more educated electorate, right? They really ought to teach it in school. As consumers, our children would be better off. Uh, when it comes to elections, they would be better off. You know, just give them what they need to know without the bias so that they can make uh, proper ground decisions for themselves, well-rounded decisions that they need to survive that will make this a much stronger country, but instead, or a, a stronger world. I mean, there's people here from everywhere and we all have some form of um, almost tabloid-esque uh, media. But, and, and the, the one thing that I really try to stress to people is that don't overestimate how terrible something is and don't underestimate how terrible something is. So as I have tried to stress on numerous occasions, even though the tabloid media 
has tried to convince us over and over again that everybody in the United Kingdom is waiting for the Sussexes to get off the plane so that they can heckle and scream at them. The truth is there are just a handful of very vocal monarchists. There is the tabloid media with their constant negativity. But by and large, most people don't really give a flip about that family. And uh, they are very favorable toward the Sussexes. But it's hard for us to see that because all we have to go on is, you know, the, the British tabloid media uh, and their reach is vast, but it's just not an accurate depiction of how the average person feels, which is why when they are trying to sell this idea that the Sussexes are not popular in the U.S., nothing could be further from the truth. There is never an occasion when people are not absolutely giddy and excited when they see the Sussexes. And I will never accept otherwise. So they can try it, but it, it just won't sell. It won't sell. People love the Sussexes here, there, and everywhere. But you just have to remember that uh, we're in a bit of a bubble. So we see a lot of negative things repeatedly because of how we have the algorithm feeding us things that we're interested in, right? And unfortunately, they know that negativity sells, so they bombard us with it. That's why you have to, especially like your Google search, every time you go to open up your Google, uh, there's negative stuff there. That doesn't mean that they speak for most people in any given country or most people in the world. It's just the algorithm giving you uh, the worst. So um, just, just remember, it's not as big as it seems. Nothing is as big as it seems. All right. Thank you so much for that, P. And, of course, remember uh, to, um, to make – oh, well, is that one – oh, make mark – no, that was, that was the link. That was the link. So, um, oh, I got to get the link for you guys. I don't have it handy, but I will put it on the community tab. Um, well, I did make a donation, but what troubled me is that I couldn't find a way to put Harry and Megan's name on it, you know, to dedicate it to them. Maybe I took the wrong steps to get there. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> I did make a donation. I'm going to have to try it again because I want somehow to, you know, dedicate it to them. And that's always something I look for when I do anything that's associated with the Sussexes. So if I can figure it out, I'll let you guys know. But uh, I will put that on the community tab uh, later. But, yeah, so I'm pretty sure that there's going to be like an uptick in donations as per usual anytime Harry and Megan are, you know, associated with a charity that just happens. So I'm going to try to make sure that I figure that out. Um, it's not always easy to find it, but if I see it, I'll show you the steps how to do it if I can. But, um, okay, so that was that one. Oh, and the outfits, the outfits. Let me see. Small print, small print. Let me see if I can figure out what that says. Okay, let me open up something else here. <laughs> Try to make the print large enough for me to see it. Can you guys see it? I can't. Ha, huh, there we go. Well, let me see. I can do even better than that. All right, so Megan looks stunning in this beautiful floral dress by Oscar de la Renta and flats by Akrazura. Worn before, it says. Uh, she was first spotted wearing the dress in June 2022, and pictures of her in the dress appeared on the Sussex Netflix docuseries later that year. So as you can see up there at the top, there's Megan. Oh, that's what she was wearing when she was sitting on the counter. Okay, and there they are walking through the uh, grounds of uh, 
Uh, of uh, <laughs> I can't say it. They're walking the grounds of of that house that they used to live in over in Narnia. I can't say the name of it. I just refuse. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, Megan looks stunning. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so she. Okay, we're good with that. Uh, I'll take your word for it, Bonzola. I cannot fix my mouth to say that. I won't fix my mouth to say that. <laughs> oh man, I I just can't. I just can't. So there you are. Take a look. Oh, someone colorized that one. Yeah, that's supposed to be black and white. They colorized it. Uh, it looks so-so. But uh, yeah, so there, and there you can see, you know, just how it would look on the hanger. But yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty. It's just like a botanical garden. Very cool. All right. Nothing but the best for our duchess. Oh, my God. Archie is wearing some suede shoes, just like his dad. Just like his dad, he's wearing some of those uh, brown suede shoes. Well, we're assuming they're brown. We didn't see them in color, I don't think. But, uh, oh, boy, there you go. <laughs> yes, Connie Bomber. <laughs> All right, so there's the Aquazura uh, flat. Love Affair flat. I guess that's the name of it, Love Affair flat. Uh, it only retails for $795. Not bad, not bad. And there's a close-up of our Duchess with the nurses. Wow, that must have been a fun day for everybody. Yeah. I, but I still say I would be very disappointed if I got up there and there was no Panda Express. And let's see right here. Oh, yeah. Now, you know what? This Here's a spot of bother. Prince Harry's concerned over serious security risk after date of his UK return leaked. The date of his return leaked. Ah, gee, I wonder where that came from. Uh, now, if this article is to be believed, the publication of the exact date and time of the Invictus Games 10th anniversary service on, on St. Paul's official website has triggered fears over Prince Harry's security. Um, well, you know, okay, maybe there was a... Eh, maybe someone at the St. Paul's just made a mistake. I don't want to overthink it. I hope that, there, that that's all there is to it. The inadvertent publication of the date and the, of uh, Prince Harry's appearance at the Invictus Games 10th anniversary service at St. Paul's Cathedral on May the 8th has raised security concerns, potentially jeopardizing his attendance. Well, since he's going to have royal protection officers, I hope, since he's going to have uh, the best possible security, they better, then it shouldn't be a problem. But uh, still, I don't think they were ready for those details to come out. Sources tell the Daily Express that Prince Harry's team emphasized the need to keep the exact date of his appearance confidential due to fears over his security in the United Kingdom. The revelation of the security details on the St. Paul's Cathedral official website has heightened fears, particularly in light of disclosure made in the Duke of Sussex's memoir, Spare, where he discusses uh, his military service, including that, oh God, they, they're, now they're reaching here. Um, not really necessary to put in the article. They're going over all of that. Uh, the truth is, uh, what about the white supremacists uh, in the UK? That seems to be their huge problem. Which, of course, as you can see, I don't think it mentions it at all. 
See there, even with something like this, their bias is breathtaking. You see that? Bias is breathtaking. They can't report anything without injecting uh, the worst possible bias. Uh, yes, Lydia, you're right. Archie's birthday is what, the 5th? Or is it the 5th or the 8th? Or was it the 6th? Oh, man, I can't remember. I know it's that first week of May. I know it's the first week of May. But, yeah, that does seem kind of deliberate, doesn't it? And and then this thing about, um, and, you know, this thing about bringing the kids for the, at the request of, his brother and his brother's wife. I don't, I, 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 I can't believe that they would. Uh. <laughs> Why do I squirm when I say anything about that? How could that possibly be true? Right? Because remember, William already has a nephew, right? And as for Kate, oh, uh, no, I haven't met her yet. Oh, remember that one? How awkward she, oh, um, but I, I can't wait to meet her. Oh, <laughs> do you remember that one? Oh, I, I, oh, I can't wait to meet her. Oh. As if, as if, when that was that time when they asked Kate if she had uh, met, um, let me see, do I have that one? Do I have that one? Oh, how phony could you be? <laughs> oh, man. Is this one it? Is this one it? Let me see. The question for Kate came from a White House reporter, and it was about family. Oh! Your Highness, um, do you have any wishes for your new niece, Lilibet? Oh, I wish her all the very best. I can't wait to meet her, because we haven't yet, um, yet met her yet, so hopefully that will be soon. <laughs> Some of life's guiltiest pleasures. <laughs> oh... How many times have I watched this? Oh, oh. Um, well, okay, I've watched it quite a few times. When they asked Kate about seeing the new baby, it, uh, number one, Kate is looking bad. Oh my God, she's looking bad. I don't know if she's not sleeping, if... I don't know what's going on with her. I'm genuinely worried about Kate Middleton. I'm so worried about her. Um, she's at the G8 summit, and outside of that controlled environment that she's accustomed to, she's not doing so well. She looks very... Um, well, she looks Kate. I don't know if that's... Anyway, um, what I'm talking about, what I'm tiptoeing my way into is the video at the G7 summit in Cornwall. Gosh, what do I know that name? Cornwall. God. Uh, uh, Corn. Oh, the Duchess of Cornwall, Camilla Barker Bowles. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. That Cornwall. Anyway, so back to Kate. When they asked her about the baby, I thought she was going to fall back in the chair. I thought she was going to do like a stunt uh, double like tumble back just to avoid answering the question. She looked around the room. You could tell this poor girl is so uncomfortable. This job does not suit her. If, if only they had a duchess in that family 
that was accustomed to speaking to people on the world stage, people who have spoken to, like, I don't know, the, the UN Secretary General or someone who's uh, perhaps gone on a mission to entertain the troops with the, oh, I, I guess the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff or Secretary of Defense. Uh, if there was only some duchess who had that kind of experience, someone who doesn't like lock up and freeze and panic when people ask her something like, uh, Your Royal Highness, do you know what time it is? You know, that kind of thing. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, Your Royal Highness, are we expecting rain tomorrow? Oh! <laughs> That was so hard to watch. I mean, but oh, what am I saying that was hard to watch? I just had my life, you know? That just gave me my life. Seeing that poor deer panic like that, um, I will admit with all sincerity, I just had like one of my best moments of 2021. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I guess I got to go because I got to go watch it again, don't I? Oh. <laughs> What's bad about this is that the body language experts won't touch it. It is quite obvious that she has a bit of a tick um, or something's going on there, but she's just shy. Oh, Oh, <laughs> oh, I, I, I haven't met her yet. Oh, <laughs> oh, Lex says she might win a BAFTA for that, but not an Oscar. I don't know. They don't get any applause at the BAFTA awards, so not exactly her crowd. She might do better at the Oscars, I think. <laughs> what is it, the Razzie Awards? Or the, the uh, what is it, the Rotten Tomatoes Awards? Maybe that will suit her. But thank you so much for that, Legs. Oh! Oh! <laughs> oh, man. That was just sad. Oh! Yes, Jill Biden was just, you know, Jill Biden had, if you guys have not seen the entire video uh, from that event, first of all, it's gone. It's not on the internet anymore. But Jill Biden was told that they were going to have some forum or some round table where they would discuss uh, children and learning and all that kind of stuff. Truth is, it was just a photo op. So when Andrea Mitchell, uh, an American reporter, Andrea Mitchell, asked her about Lilibet Diana, uh, she had that deer in the headlight look. Oh! And right after that, they shut it down. As soon as that happened, they shut it down. Uh, Jill was looking like, I, but I brought my binder. She'd said, I brought my, my binder and I thought we were going to, nope, sorry, Jill, we're shutting it down. Somebody asked uh, uh, the art history major a question and that's not allowed. So they shut it down. Yeah. Very, very sad. Very sad. All they wanted from Jill was a photo op. They did not really want to have any type of like topical conversation with redeeming social value or none of that stuff. Uh, let me out of here. That's all they wanted was to get her out of there. Oh, well. But that's their standard bearer. That is she who is going to save the royal family, their secret weapon. They got so many of them. So let's get on to the Kinsey Collection. I did make a video for that as well. Um, 
I did not premiere it uh, uh, yet, but I am going to do that later. But you guys, there are some new photos. There are some new photos um, that were uploaded today. And um, well, I'm going to share them with you. There are some new photos that were uploaded today, and I am going to share. Here goes. <laughs> On Thursday, March 21st, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex hosted a special event in honor of the Kinsey African American Art and History Collection. One of the most extensive holdings of African American art, artifacts, and documents. The illustrious collection, which first debuted at SoFi Stadium at Hollywood Park during Super Bowl 56 in 2022, tells the powerful and poignant story of Black history spanning centuries of resilience, creativity, and triumph. The evening was brought together through a partnership between the Archwell Foundation and the Bernard and Shirley Kinsey Foundation for Art and Education. Welcoming an array of industry leaders to the space, the Duke and Duchess joined guests on a private tour of the exhibit which was followed by a moderated conversation with Bernard, Shirley, and Khalil Kinsey, trailblazers in the art and philanthropy community who have dedicated their lives to uplifting and celebrating prolific art and culture in the context of Black America. The group discussed the history and significance of Black art and how our communities can work together to preserve this vital piece of American history. Through this exhibit and many others, the Kinsey family has enabled millions across the globe to access the African-American experience through art. The Kinsey African-American Art and History Collection is one of the largest and most comprehensive private collections of African-American art and historical artifacts in the world, containing rare and important primary source items from 1595 to present day, and fine art by an array of seminal artists, including Jacob Lawrence, Alma Thomas, Ernie Barnes, Bisa Butler, and many more. The award-winning collection is currently on view at the Holocaust Museum Houston through June 2024. Right. Uh, so there you go. Um, this one was uh, newly uploaded today. This one, Doria looks so beautiful. How, how sweet mother and daughter. And don't know those people. Isn't that uh, Danny Awello, I think, right? Uh, I don't know. And of course, I don't know if you can see, but all the way back there, uh, see the lady with the bright blue? 
Well, Megan and Harry, they're sitting right there. Ah, and here's a close-up. Here is a close-up. Remember, you guys, they're not that close. They're not that close. Um, they tried to convince us that the Sussexes were in trouble when they were really projecting because, well, I'm not trying to be shady, but we all know who was actually in trouble. So I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Um, and, of course, there you can see on the left, that is the um, Kinsey's, Mon Pa Kinsey. And, of course, um, uh, Beyonce's Mama Tina Knowles. And here is a lovely close-up of Megan observing, enjoying the art. I love art galleries. If you need to relax, if you need to be calm, if you need to, I, I always say, you guys, uh, bring some art into your life. Bring some art into your life. And it doesn't have to be what you think other people like. It should be what you enjoy looking at. That's what it should be. And, of course, thank you for inviting us. Thank you for having us. Uh, and, of course, you guys, I believe that the Sussexes uh, hosted the entire event. So there you go. Very, very cool. Uh, and then someone posted, liked by Casey Fremont and others, blah, 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 peace and love to the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, the Archwell Foundation, and Christine Messineo of, uh, what is it, Freeze, L.A., New York. It was wonderful to partner on such a beautiful evening. More, the Kinsey Collection. Yep, yep, yep. Lovely, lovely. Wow, it must have been nice to have been there. And look at here, you guys. Uh, this was shared on the Archwell uh, Foundation website, which, of course, please, you all, make sure you go to the Archwell Foundation and um, see what the latest things are. We want to send as much traffic through the Archwell Foundation as possible. So please do that. Make sure you go to the Archwell Foundation so that you can uh, make sure that our faves are seeing how much we enjoy it. Okay? It doesn't cost you anything. It's at Sussex.com or you can go to Archwell.com. Either one. Uh, they are connected. Uh, so anyway... This uh, appeared today. Now, there's no uh, photos that they have shared from the birthday party here. It was just this one photo. And then, of course, uh, this uh, statement was attached to it. Uh, oh, okay. Let me make this bigger so I can see it. Ah, there we go. Family Day in Uvalde. In early March, Prince Harry and Meghan, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, and the Archwell Foundation hosted a heartwarming day of unity, healing, and unwavering support in Uvalde, Texas, uh, with our partner at Kaboom. This gathering brought together parents and children from the local community for an afternoon of engaging activities and quality time. You all, we didn't really see that many photos. I knew it was something at the community center. Uh, I'm going to do some hunting around and see if I can find more. But hopefully there's a video or something. I would love to see that. The Duchess uh, first visited Uvalde in 2022 following the tragedy, I'm sorry, the tragic shooting at Robb Elementary School. Since that poignant visit, she has maintained the bond with families she met and along the Archwell Foundation uh, remained deeply involved in the community. Spurred by their initial visit and recognizing the profound need for a sanctuary that fosters joy and healing for children, the Duke and Duchess championed the creation of a playground as a symbol of hope for the community, unveiled on October the uh, 2022, this playground has since blossomed into a vibrant hub of unity, 
and promise for the city symbolizing the enduring power of community and their continuous pursuit of high of brighter uh, tomorrow of a brighter tomorrow so there you go that was on the archwell again please go and see it for yourself uh what else oh and again thank you love wins movement for the very very cool video which i do believe i put on the community tab it was such a surprise i couldn't believe it i was looking i'm like is that my name <laughs> and i knew it was for me when i saw the airplane i don't know how uh anybody knew i like planes but um yeah i love airplanes and so i looked and it was it was very uplifting and heartwarming so uh, if you have not seen it, make sure you go to the community tab so you can check it out for yourself. And uh, let me see what else do I have here. Uh, wait. Oh. Oh, did I not do that already? I'm sorry. I didn't do that already. Uh, there it is. <laughs> That's what I was talking about. I was looking at the wrong screen. Uh, sorry about that. All right, and then right there, since Baron tucked so many of us into bed night after night with insight, information, funny stories, sometimes even scary image or two just for laughs, I thought Baron should have a lullaby of his very own to help him fall asleep. Enjoy, squatties. Click here to watch. Uh, oh, you know what? I'll put, I could put that at the top of the link. Where's my manners? I can put that at the top of the link, uh, at the top of the chat, the top of the link. Okay, community, community. Uh, oh, wait, I didn't share it, did I? I'm sorry, I'm glad I said something. I did not share it. Uh, did I? Oh, yeah, yeah, I did. I did. Okay. Okay. This is so cool. Uh, let me see. Copy. Copy. Do that. Aha. There we go. Okay, and pin to the top of the chat. There you are. So check it out. Uh, that is a lullaby for me. Thank you very much again, Love Wins Movement. It does my heart warm to, I'm just, I'm, I'm so, so happy with it. So thank you so much. Um, <laughs> it kind of caught me off guard. I will admit, I was just like, Really? Is that for me? <laughs> uh, okay, but thank you so much. All right. Uh, oh, got a sound bite for you. Now, this young lady right here, she was right on it. Right on it. Let me see here. Can I do? Yeah, I can. Well, that works. Uh Let me do that over. Wondering why this American is worried about all this. Not worried. Princess Diana is my Roman Empire. That's all. I've said it before, but I used to really admire the images of these two, but that was prior to what they did to Harry's Bride. In real time, we all watched it. Many of us who were already in this niche were watching it in real time, what they were doing to her. The press campaigns, the palace campaigns, the personal vendettas. She survived, though. I do believe that the massive amount of haters out there are enraged by the fact that the most popular prince on the planet chose to marry a self-made feminist humanitarian who happened to be a woman of color. And not just any woman of color, but a type that many of them didn't even realize existed. Someone who could pass, but refuses. And her pre-royal life bears this out. There's just something about Megan 
that unsettles a lot of uh, men and women. I think their concept of race is a little shaken knowing that this woman could have this position in our world. Maybe they're getting closer to the idea that, hey, race is just a social construct. It's not a scientific categorization, right? We've all heard that. Prince Harry choosing Megan and Megan choosing him right back for me was an inflection point, I believe, in our society because the British royal family was integrated, however they handled it. There's also a turning point, I believe. You know, there's an awakening in our society that realizes, oh, wow, there's a wide swath of people that have privilege but are also actively pro-Black. So in conclusion, I really want to say for my own mental health, I'm done arguing the point that these two are superior. It's fine. Other people can have another opinion. Just I'm not going to really address all the lies unless it gets really, really bad. I want to just stay in a very positive space and do positive edits and kind of leave that other. They left them. I would like to leave the others behind as well. So you'll only see me addressing the other royals if it gets crazy. For the most part, I just want to do positive stuff about Harry and Meghan because they keep showing up and they keep doing good work. Okay, that was very, very low, the sound. So let me take turn this microphone down a bit. It was very, very low. Um, it seemed even worse when I tried to play it for you. But uh, yeah, so I just discovered her today. Well, you know, when it's somebody new, we always, you know, give a little bit of a side eye until we know better. But uh, mixed uh, pivot is uh what her TikTok channel is so i'm gonna check her out and see what other stuff she has so uh yeah i kind of thought the sound wasn't going through and i was just like wait a minute um i may have to take that back off of here though because i could just barely hear some music in the background and uh well we don't want to get in trouble do we <clears throat> you could barely hear it but i could hear it Okay, so, yeah, I like her. So right here, Andy Cohen finally apologized to Princess Kate for fueling wild conspiracy theories about her health, branding himself a numpty and groveling Mia Copa in the wake of her cancer diagnosis. Uh, I wish I kept my mouth shut. Uh, I, I actually am thinking the same thing right now. Although I wish this is the part where he would have kept his mouth shut. Uh, this this whole thing about getting celebrities to apologize, I think it's gone way too far. It has it's, the shelf life on this is slowly reaching that point, but I don't know that there's anything to apologize for. I don't think that anything was malicious. It was just a pop culture moment. And now we hear that the only reason why that happened is because they felt uh, as though it was going to be revealed by. So I don't, I don't know, and I don't care. Um, not my problem. Not my problem. I'm not interested in that. Um, but um, hopefully, hopefully soon, we will, we will figure out or find out what has happened for show. Hopefully. Okay. Uh, and there is the groveling apology. Just want to say I am heartbroken by the news about Princess Kate. Uh, he said, I think someone on Sky News called me a numpty and they were right. I wish I'd kept my mouth shut. Andy explained that it had taken him this long to address it uh, because the radio show had been in hiatus. So this was his first opportunity to get back in front of a uh, live microphone. He added that everyone on the show was praying for her as well as King Charles. I could imagine what their uh, conversations are like when there's nobody around. I could only imagine. Um, anyway, Andy Cohen gets kicked out of being cruel to 
I'm sorry, Andy Cohen gets a kick out of being cruel to women, and Kate Middleton is no exception. I hope that after she was forced to publicly talk about her cancer diagnosis, he will muster up the decency to apologize to her. People with power need to lead by example. Again, I think that this is overreaching. But now the media person uh, has reflected on, you know, it's almost like some kind of cult-like situation where everybody has to pay homage. Everybody has to take turns uh, bowing and scraping. That's what it appears like to me. Um, I'm going to say this hopefully for the last time. The press... Uh, not the press, but the communications at Kensington Palace is responsible. It is they who need to apologize. And if that includes William or Kate or anybody else uh, in the institution and under that roof or under the command of William the Terrible, then that's who it is. It is no one else's fault. And yes, where are all the apologies for Megan? I was listening to some numbskulls today going on and on about how terrible Kate has been treated. You guys, I don't know when, but all of this groveling and all of this soul searching is going to backfire. It has already backfired. And the way it backfired was when all of this was going on, the world was asking the question, what about Megan Markle. How did you all treat Megan? When are you going to apologize to Megan? What about when you bullied Megan? And they haven't given a sufficient answer. There has not been a response that will satisfy me. YM Droid says, uh, a reminder that Charles, who has cancer, Fergie, who has cancer, both of whom are at least five years older than, older than Kate, uh, to be out and about. Where's Kate? Hello. We saw the queen walking around with her staff like Moses. Uh, if the queen can go out and about, if Charles can go out, if uh, Fergie handles her business, where's Kate Middleton? Uh-oh, they're going to accuse us of bullying for asking a question. We're going to be accused of bullying for asking a question about a public figure. Yeah, start off by apologizing for the, the flower girl's dresses. Uh, apologize for the, uh, or is, were they bridesmaid or whatever? And apologize for wearing white to another woman's uh, wedding, among other things, being that way about having a baby brain. Apologize for that stuff. Uh, okay, I'm done with that. Uh, yes, I'm almost done, by the way, you guys. Check it out. What a work of art. It is called a Toilette a Paper. You know, <clears throat> I saw this, and I was wondering where that little girl got that TP from. I think I have figured it out. I think she just took it from another exhibit and gave it to the the pooping man. <laughs> I think she just merely took it from that exhibit over to this exhibit uh, to the uh, famous pooping man. Yes, meditating and pooping man. Uh, as always, thank you to the Mod Squad for... Uh, making this a very safe place. And also thank you to everyone for your generous and thoughtful contributions, even a new membership. And thank you all so much for your likes and your shares. And of course, subscriptions are always welcome. We're um, going to reach 55,000 very soon. Looking forward to it. Um, and, of course, the anniversary of Royal Sussex is coming up soon. So, um, yeah, we got that to look forward to. And, yeah, that's it. That's it. I'm done. One hour, 23 minutes. 
and I noticed that Petal was on. Um, I didn't realize she was on, and I saw it just as I was logging. And I'm like, oh, Lord, Petal's on. But I think she had, she was just about done at that point. I didn't get a notification for some reason. Uh, let me see. Right, TB, apologize for nothing. And as usual, whenever we see our queens, it is time to go. And you know what I mean. And our final word for the day. Yes, I'm getting us up out of here. <laughs> Wait a minute. Where did I see that? Uh, how do we close it out for today? Mm. Mm. Okay, is that that famous quote? Let me see here. Uh, no, that's not it. Oh, how about this one from Bruce Lee? It is the man that has nothing to lose or is willing to lose everything to beat you at. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, okay, one more time. It is the man that has nothing to lose or is it willing to lose everything to beat you that I, I don't like that. One. <laughs> How about this one? Uh, do not pray for an easy life. Pray for the strength to endure a difficult one. Okay. Do not pray for an easy life. Pray for the strength to endure a difficult one. Okay. That's going to be a little to get used to, but okay. I'll do that. Um, yeah, but I think most of us pray for strength, don't we? I think most of us pray for strength, so... All right, so I uh, love you guys. <clears throat> Ooh, water. Okay, thank you very much. I will see you all tomorrow. And remember, no bad energy. No bad energy. Good night, everyone. And let's cue the Ginger Avenger. I feel like I'm forgetting something. <laughs>